So mixing and mastering, it's different for every genre. For bass music, it's going to be specific. We're going to have to make things really loud, but really clean at the same time. And I'm going to show you different techniques that we can do that. The main techniques I want to talk about would be wideness, stereo field, panning left to right. We also want to think about volume. Things are really loud, things are quiet, and throughout the song there's different you know, levels. During your drop everything's really loud, for example, and during the intro it's quiet. So let's listen to Chachi. Embrace the dark side. <laughs> damn son I, I chose this song because when you listen to it in the car it sounds amazing when you listen to it on your iphone it sounds amazing when you listen to it on regular speakers or headphones it sounds amazing and that's the whole goal you want to be able to reference the track off of many sources so that you make sure it's good because it may not be good in the car you'll make a song that sounds really good on you know you're in your headphones or on the laptop speakers but you bring it to the car and it's not there yet so real important get monitoring headphones you can hear a flat response and make sure you're making the correct adjustments to your sound just using these headphones is you know how you want to start because if you have monitors set up on your desk they're only going to work if your room is is treated completely and when I mean treated, I mean a perfect studio setting, with, which means you walk in and you, can, you can't hear anything. It's almost silent and that's where you want to be so you can make you know, the correct adjustments. Otherwise, the sound is bouncing off walls and you're, you're making you know, the wrong decisions and you got to be careful. And remember too, with sub bass and the low frequencies, you can't hear those, you know, you feel them. And if you don't have an actual sub, you're not going to be able to feel it in here because you need an actual sub. And if you're lucky, to have one actually in your house an actual subwoofer or in your car that'll be really helpful for you now let's look at the eq8 and these frequency ranges you see this is the sub bass the sub is cut at about like 110 <laughs> so this sub is very important when it comes to mixing the sub bass fitting together with all the other elements of the song is the most important thing so usually on your sub in bass music you're going to have an eq8 that's cutting around 100 hertz so that all the other frequencies in this range can be perfect if you have multiple basses playing, it's going to sound like they're on top of each other and it's muddy and it doesn't sound clean or good. If you think about it, if you keep stacking things on top of each other at the end of the signal flow, it's going to sound crazy because it all just multiplies on top of each other. So each sound that you put in your song needs to have EQ or you need to know what the frequencies are doing. Early Alive said you can always have a lot of high frequencies, but you can never, you know, have a lot of low frequencies. You got to leave it by itself, but you can stack high frequencies. And when I mean high frequencies, I mean like your leads like this. So that's like mid range and high for the EQ, mid and high. This is the main lead of the drop. It's being, cut at 100. it's being cut perfectly at 100. So since this is my main lead, I boosted it a little up here. These boosts you're going to do, you know, per taste per each song because it's going to be different. When I make these loud sounds, I use these long processing chains to make things louder. So you'll use like loud racks that I have for download. Get it in my Patreon. I have everything available. This is a loud rack here. OTTs, saturators, it makes the sound super loud. We want to get it to a loudness level that, that we like. You can get a free program called U Lean Loudness Meter so you can actually monitor how loud it's getting. So let's check it. So see negative 3.6. It's very loud. 
Usually when you put in a sound, it'll be like negative 20 or negative 15. And you gotta just keep pumping it. And these loud racks, you know, help it. See this OTT, we're boosting a little bit. Saturators boosting a little bit. We have soft clip on. And then we end our signal flow always with a, a JST clip to clip it at zero. So we're never clipping on the actual track. See, we're not clipping here. If we keep clipping and we add up all these, at all the clips, it's gonna sound distorted at the end and it'll be harder for your master chain to process everything. So you wanna make sure everything's clean from the beginning. So remember JST clip, this is a stereo effects, just making it wide, reverb. And then if you look at this now, we're gonna look at wideness because when you're mixing and making these sounds, it's gonna be mono, basically, usually, unless you go into Serum and your original sound has a lot of voices. See how this is one voice? It's gonna be mono. But if this was like eight or 16, you can expect it to be wide. And then you'll have to adjust with the utility, the mono, you know, so you can control how, how much you have in the middle. If you make a sound that's all wide and there's no middle, then you're not gonna be able to hear it at the club. So you wanna make sure there's a middle signal. And most of the time, you'll want it to have a wide signal on top of the middle signal in parallel. And I have a stereo effects that that does this for you it's also on my in my patreon very easy to make but i'm going to show you the difference on how that works right now so it's off right now and we're going to look at how wide it is with this vector scope see it's very mono it's very in the middle all right but then when i turn the stereo effects which is this it's a mid chain and a side chain i'm sorry <laughs> the side chain yeah the side chain so the sides has this eq boosting the sides it has a hoss effect to widen it out and then this mid channel is you know keeping the middle signal so we have both signals going and now this is what it looks like off 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 This is important. Being able to make your bases and make sure they're not all in mono is important. And usually we make the mistake of getting the bass, making it stereo, but we lose our mono signal. And you have to make sure you keep that mono signal for your main lead, at least. I mean, you can go to a club, they only have mono speakers, you play that song and you're not, you can't even hear a lot of that track. So very important. On another important sound like this sustain here, You see we're doing the stereo effects. We're having the mids and the sides play. And then we're doing the EQ, of course, cutting it, making sure no basses play. You always wanna make sure you cut the basses out of all your, cut the sub frequencies, these low frequencies, out of all the sounds that don't need them. All right, cool. So if you look at this sub here, there's two different subs. So I have a group of different subs. Some of them will have like noise on them like this with this erosion, give it noise. And then I'll have a clean sub to play with the, the actual basis. So listen to it here. These mid basses right here, all my main basses sound like this. Now, you see, we were putting EQs on all the sounds originally from these, but then on the full group, we also put another EQ cutting right here. But this is a special EQ because it's the Fletcher Munson curve. And the Fletcher Munson curve is basically just like this diagram that shows you the frequencies where our ears, because our ears don't hear the frequencies at the same volume, at the same decibel level. Like we hear low frequencies at a different volume than high frequencies. And the Fletcher Munson curve basically shows you that. Put the picture up, you'll probably see the picture right now. But what this does is a special effect. So when we hit the scale up and down, we're removing the frequencies that sound harsh to our ear. Because these basses start to get really loud and start to sound really harsh. So we can clean it up with this tool. And I just scale it down to like 34, 36, 38. We're removing some of these harsh frequencies. And in the end, uh, when we make it louder, it's not gonna be super mega harsh. It's still gonna sound clean and loud at the same time. The Fletcher Munson curve is amazing. And this is another audio effect that will be in my Patreon.
One of the most important parts of mixing and mastering in bass music is your sidechain. Please look at, watch my sidechain video here. Sidechaining is super easy, it's super important. It's one of the first things that you need to learn. Without this sidechain, the song would sound completely different. Listen. Hear that? Sidechain off. Sidechain off. With dance music, with EDM, that kick is God. So as soon as the kick hits, everything else in that track lowers in volume so we can hear that kick super clean, super loud. And that's extremely important. So you got to make sure you have your sidechain down and you got to make sure you know how to use your sidechain because you should use it in your drop every time, right? You don't have to, but you should. And in the beginning of the song, you don't necessarily have to use your sidechain. You can make it sound different like I did. A little trappy with no sidechain. This is with sidechain on. But I didn't like that. So I left it off. Right? You can even add sidechain in the build, and while it builds, it's like, it's, it, it's crazy. Sometimes it's too crazy, but you could adjust your sidechain to make it like amazing. I didn't do it in this build up, I just did it in this drop. Now, when it comes to, you know, your, your drums in the background, think of your drum set, the rides, the cymbals, all the hi-hats, that's just all going to be a low cut right here. I have on the group just a simple low cut. I even took away these mid frequencies to clean it up even more. When things start to get muddy, you can start removing frequencies in this, in these sections around 100 to 1000. Depending on your song, it'll sound different. So you want to listen to what sounds best, but that's how you'll clean the frequencies within the group. Snare and the kick in bass music is very uh, special. They're separate from every everything else, and they're going to be the loudest parts of the song. So when I make the song originally, the kick and the snare are going to be as loud as possible. And then I'm going to try to get all the bass sounds uh, to match that loudness. And then eventually the bass sounds will be louder than the kick and snare. And then we'll add a little volume to the kick and snare, which I do here with a glue compressor, for example. Yep. And then you can just add as much compression, super compression, or you can find the, that sweet spot. Think about dynamic range next. Think about us looking at our SoundCloud tracks, you know, looking at this waveform and being satisfied with it. So this is the waveform for Chachi right here. And if you see in these sections, it's basically boosted to the maximum because that's the sub, just boosted at zero. And then in these sections, we get quiet. So we're going from like quiet to loud, to quiet, to loud, to quiet. and and that's dynamic range within the song is making sure it's just not loud the whole time our ears get tired of that if you just keep pumping it with volume we get tired of that naturally so you want to make sure that you you mess with volumes over time automation over time that washout that i mentioned is used in the master and i use it only in the build-up and it builds over time so if you see right here builds up just washing it out. Embrace the dark side. And as soon as that pre-drop hits, I, I remove it so we can really hear this pre-drop. Embrace the dark side. Then it starts. Then it starts. Just to let you know, when I made this song, I didn't make the intro first. I made the drop first. I started just with the drop. I finished the 32 bar drop and then I moved on to the buildup and the intro, and I kind of work backwards. And you can definitely do it over time. I felt like that's the easiest way when making bass music, specifically with drops. It's easier to, you know, match, because you, you want to make your drop, but then you can match your intro and build up to the drop. You don't want to have to be forced to make a specific drop because your intro sounds like something. You can basically go either way, whichever feels best for you. But in this song, I had I found some melodies. Um, my original song was in D minor for the drop, so I just picked D minor sounds here. I use halftime. I use this halftime effect to slow things down to make things sound crazy. 
and I'll use two different half times with two different settings. And they'll turn on in different sections, which is what's happening here. And then you get brass. So if you listen to this brass, it's very heavy. Originally, it had a lot of sub frequencies, but we removed them. You know, we can't have this brass play with the sub. This sub is by itself. Remember, this is the one at zero. Super fat sub bass, which we're only leaving at zero because this is bass music. You know, if this was any other genre, it would not be at zero. It'd be at like negative nine or negative 12. It's not that loud, but this is a loud song. So the intro, we use a filter to sound quiet, right? If you look at this filter at the beginning, look at the master here, and the filter starts to come in. So it's low volume, it starts to go up, and then effect. And then it goes to full volume, basically. When I say full volume, I mean the sub is at full volume. That's basically the loudest. And then our kick, we, we mix accordingly. For the intro, I didn't want my kick to be super fat and loud because that's how the drop's gonna be. You wanna introduce the listener with like a, like a soft kick. And that, that's what's happening here. And those are the mixing decisions you wanna make. You wanna find a quieter, softer kick, a quieter, softer snare, and use those for the intro. Because if you use the same kicks and snares throughout the whole song, the listener's gonna get bored and it's not gonna sound as good. So it's, it's good to surprise, surprise people with different sounds in different sections of the track. This, these little hits right here, I just did a low cut. So you see basically everything's getting low cut to make room for the sub, all right? And then when the sub stops, like in this, in this section, which is the buildup and breakdown. So we're not playing any sub bass in this. And that was a decision I made. I could make the mixing decision to leave a sub bass in, right? And then we can build the sub bass up. But if I did that, then this, the sub, when it hits on the drop, wouldn't sound as hard. It wouldn't sound as different. So that's why I left the build without a sub. And in different songs, that's what you want to do. You want to you know, introduce this sub, different elements at different times to make it sound good. All right, and then when the build starts, I just add this choir. Now, if you see, this choir has no processing, no effects, because I didn't want need to make it super loud like everything else. It was already perfect volume when I drug it in. D minor, and this EQ is not doing anything. But you see, I'm not cutting the lows in this because... There's no bass playing, as I just showed you. There's no sub bass. So we can let these low frequencies play so we can hear the full sound. If I cut the lows right here, it'll sound like it's missing something. So you can leave your lows in, in those tracks when there's no sub playing. When you're, when you're mixing, you got to remember we're making dance music. So these buildups, you have to make them build up in volume, in pitch. So for example, this is building up in volume, pitch, and there's a filter that's on it as well. So a lot of movement. And this is really the only build-up snare. I didn't use claps and snares, just one snare. Within the MIDI, you can see it's pitching up in volume with the pitch bin, and it's going up in volume with this volume automation, and then the filter is changing too. That's mixing, you know, making it from low to high volume. Depending on your song, depending on the time, it may be really loud or maybe not that loud. So you got to make those mixing decisions with your ears using actual headphones, not just on laptop speakers, because you won't be able to make those actual decisions. All right, that's individual tracks. The vocals, usually you can leave, um, remember the lows in sections that don't have bass but uh, most of the time you'll cut the lows of your eq uh, on the vocals think about it uh, every song's different so you want to try it with lows on your vocals or without it may sound good so you always want to just check that last but not least is the master after we get all of our sounds super loud with saturators compressors we get our kicks and our snares loud simply by 
uh, glue compressors and saturators. Um, and one, one thing is you sample choice is super important. You know, you can't just throw in a bad sample and expect it to get loud and good because that's not going to happen. You want to find good sample choice. Use splice. Splice is amazing. And when you use splice, you'll be able to find hard hitting samples. I also have samples in my Patreon, so you can get those there. Remember, we get the bases loud in the drop. Everything's basically going to negative 3.5. We're trying to get it as loud as possible. We mixed everything with the EQ. We're making things clean so that we're sending all the signal to the master. And if you did it right, you shouldn't have to do much on your master. In this type of music, we don't need to use all these crazy plugins because our original input sound is super loud. So. On my master, I have this more high-end OTT effect that just adds a little bit more high-end just to brighten up the highs. I'll have this in my Patreon group folder as well. I have a utility so that I can listen to it in mono. If you remember, all these songs, I mean, all these tracks have stereo effects, so you want to make sure that nothing is um, missing. So if we listen to the song in mono compared to stereo, you'll hear they're very similar. So in the mono, we can still hear our kick, our snare, we can hear our main leads, we can hear the sustain in the background. So that's good. And then when you go stereo, which just sounds amazing. Everything gets widened out. That's important. You want to make sure you check it in mono and stereo because when you roll up to the club, you think everything's good and everything's all stereo. You're not going to hear those sounds. Then your whole song sounds like a dog poo. When you're playing these songs, if you just keep pumping people with bass and the same kicks and snares, we get bored of it. So you want to like remove frequencies sometimes and then hit them back. So, so that's what I do here on the drop. So listen, so in this section, there's a filter that turns on. It's a phone filter. Look at this. And then while it turns on, this multi-pan dynamic turns on to make it a little louder. And they turn on at the same time in this section. <laughs> This section removes so many frequencies. We only hear these, these mids, but then as soon as this hits, everything's back and it's just right at the drop. And that just makes it so much more impactful. And these are very secret, amazing mixing decisions that you can make that, you know, I found this one out by Arauda because he's a champ. Use that. The auto filter is on the master because, you know, at the beginning I have it turned on. And then I have the automation going up. And as you see, when the automation, when it's done, I just literally just turn it off because you don't want it to be on at all. So you just leave it off, leave it clean, turn it on in different sections. And then you see the automation. The only other section you can use these filters is at like the end of the, the buildups. You can, you know, during these fill sections or in the breakdown like this. Everything's filtered out. So I like filtered down and then I bring it down here so listen to how this filter sounds so that's really transitioning the next phrase the breakdown honestly and making it sound just you know luscious next is the bass clef washout which i showed you i'm only using this on the Oh, actually, I am using it on the filter sections as well. On the breakdown, you see how it's washing out and then washing back down. And then this is the buildup. And then I even added it to this section. Embrace the dark side. Now I'm about to show you this section and then we'll be finished with this, but I'm going to finish this master on the ozone. I don't use anything except the imager to simply see how wide things are. Embrace the dark side. You see the vocals mono. I, I wanted it to be like that. I didn't want it stereo. You make the decision to keep things mono in some sections and then make it stereo. Because remember, we'll get bored if everything's just wide all the time. Mono sometimes and then boom, hit them with a stereo. And that's what I'm doing with the pre-drop. <laughs> Embrace the dark side. Nice. Perfect. At the end of the master, I have a JST clip to literally clip 
the full song at zero. And I don't even usually boost it at all. But this is just a simply zero. And then I add this U lean loudness meter to make sure I can monitor how loud the final track is. That's fine. That is totally cool with me. Negative five is like the quietest I'll go on a, on a bass music song. Negative two is what No Sphere told me. No, negative 1.2 he said he was at. So you can get really loud nowadays and really clean with the technology and software that we have. So use it. Um, that's the whole master chain, you know? Most of it's effects. Like, like that's an effect. That's an effect. There's really only two things on the mastering chain. This more high end and this. Um, but I'm going to put all of these effects and uh, the JST clip more high end um, in my Patreon. JST clip is actually $30 that you can buy. It's, it's one of the best plugins ever. So I'll put that in the description. I want to show you lastly uh, what I did in the second drop. I made the mixing decision to remove the kick and the snare, but leave the side chain in. And it, it sounds like this. It's the dark side. <laughs> So that's like kind of a fake out drop and this side chain is pumping it without the side chain it sounds completely different no so that's really cool too you could just do little effects like that with your side chain to you know make things pump make things good mixing and mastering is is all about loudness levels eq use saturation we use ott to make things loud these glue compressors help a lot if you uh think about it it's going to be different in your drop sections and it's going to be different in the build-up sections and intro so when you use uh, jst clips when you use more high-end these uh, multi-band compressors you're basically uh, compressing up the whole song to make everything louder and clean and you know just altogether good you got to make sure that you understand each song is different and each song that you come across is going to be a different challenge. But if you use these different techniques and methods and just the whole thought process, you'll be able to figure it out. And that's, that's the whole goal. It's not a magic trick. There's no one rule, rules all. It's, it's about learning and it's about practicing. So you guys keep making good music. You keep bumping it. Hit me up on my Patreon. You can get all these free goodies. I'm going to keep making more videos. Uh, probably a sudden death music video soon. But congrats, stay fresh. Peace out. <laughs>